and the scale factor is proportional to t. And in fact, this is empty. In fact, it's flat space-time. So why is flat space-time interesting? The answer is, as a cosmology by itself, it's not interesting, but it is an asymptotic state for many universes. It's not a good model by itself, but it's a very good model of the asymptotics of many universes. And the third one, which is similar, is the de Sitter universe. And for the Sitter, de Sitter universe, it's easiest perhaps to have P is naught, rho is naught, and lambda is not naught. And then there are many forms that we can look at the form with K is naught, and we get exponential h of t, an exponential expansion for the de Sitter universe. This is the K, sorry, the K is zero form of the de Sitter universe. And that again is important because it is the asymptotic state of many universes. In fact, universes with lambda positive that expand forever are all asymptotic to that one. And universes with k is minus 1 and lambda is naught are all asymptotic to that one. So these are the asymptotic states in the future. The Milne for ones with vanishing cosmological constant and the de Sitter for ones with um, positive cosmological constant. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, the space sections are negatively curved. The space time is flat. In fact, um, if you're familiar with hyperbolic geometry, what the universe, Milne universe is, is in flat space time, it's the sections, the, the space sections are the sections at constant time from the origin, actually. Um, this is a picture which people may not be used to. But in fact, what the universe, Milne universe is, it's this section of constant time surfaces embedded in flat space time. Okay, now, the other one that's important is in the early universe. What would be a good model for the hot Big Bang era? Well, the answer is P is mu over 3, K is naught. We can ignore the curvature and lambda is naught. And this is the Einstein de Sitter universe for radiation, and the scale factor goes as t to the a half. And that immediately follows again from here. Put in radiation, ignore lambda, ignore k, and you get the scale factor proportional to t to the a half. And this, what you then do is put that back in the Friedman equation, and this gives you a unique relation of the temperature and the time. If you put that back... Now, so in this case, what we've got is 3s dot squared over s squared is kappa mu, which is radiation, which is therefore ka uh, kappa times the Stefan constant times t to the fourth. And so it's telling you the temperature in relation to the scale factor. Um, and this is where the nucleosynthesis time scales come from. It's really important in nucleosynthesis how fast you go through the period of creation of the light elements. If you go through too fast, you don't get any nucleosynthesis, and if you go through too slow, you don't get any nucleosynthesis. And you have to go through at the right speed to get the 75% uh, of hydrogen, 25% helium, which we see today. Now... The de Sitter universe became famous in the 1950s as the steady state universe of Bondi, Gold, and Hoyle. What they said is they didn't like the Big Bang for exactly the reasons I was saying. They said, let's see if we can avoid the singular state. And so they said, let's think of a universe which is expanding but unchanging in time. Now, what does that require? It requires that the energy density is a constant, and it requires that the Hubble parameter is a constant. If you try to solve the Einstein field equations, you can only solve it if there is vanishing matter. But they said, well, as I've already indicated, we don't know the field equations are true on this scale, so let's modify the field equations. We add in a term, which is a creation term. We modify the energy conservation equations. 
And so they modified the energy conservation so that as the universe expanded, new particles were created all the time. Hydrogen atoms were coming into existence. I think all protons were coming into existence. Now, the rate was negligible. It was one proton per uh, cubic megaparsec per century or something like that um, that you couldn't measure by any ordinary measurements. But overall, it was enough to give you a steady-state universe. So they got the solution with the modified Einstein field equations. And a lot of time was spent in the 1960s trying to find out if this model was true or not. It was a very good model scientifically because it could be contradicted. It was contradicted by radio sources. Before the microwave background, it was discovered that radio sources could not be static. That there couldn't be a steady density of radio sources. And that killed off the steady-state universe. It got even more killed off when the microwave background was found because it's difficult to explain a microwave background in a steady-state universe. But I'm just saying that now you can also get the steady-state universe if you... Uh, yeah, well, it's, ju it's just the universe with just a cosmological constant. And it's important to realize a cosmological constant is exactly the same as a fluid with rho plus p is zero. I mentioned this yesterday. I'm going to mention it again. Whenever you have a cosmological constant, you can say it's a cosmological constant, or you can say it's a fluid in which rho plus p is zero. Because as I pointed out yesterday, in that case, this is zero, and therefore rho is a constant, so the density is a constant. So a fluid with rho plus p zero is a constant, and that is exactly the same physically, macroscopically considered, as a cosmological constant. Okay, now, there's lots of fun things we can do with the dynamics of these models, and I mustn't do too much of it, but I'd like to do some of it. Um, Jeff, how long do you want to continue? <laughs> um, all right, maybe what I'll finish off this time with is a nice phase plane. Whenever you've got a system of equations like this, as mathematicians, it's good to go, let's see if we can find phase planes, because they tell you a huge amount in a simple space. And this phase plane comes from a paper by Stabel and Refstahl. And most of you won't have seen it, because it's monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society in 1966, volume 132, page 379. And what they do is they plot a very nice phase plane in which this parameter is what they call sigma naught, which is omega naught over 2. One of the changes of notation which has happened, the mathematical cosmologists in the old days called the density parameter sigma, and it differed by a factor 2 from what is now omega. And along the bottom is the deceleration parameter. And what you have here is minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And up here, in terms of sigma naught, we have a half, 1, 2. And in this phase plane, you draw a... There's a critical point, which is the point a half and a half, and that's the einstein de Sitter universe. The point a half, a half is the einstein de Sitter universe. And there's a curve, a straight line curve through there, and that is the curve vanishing cosmological constant. And on this side, the cosmological constant is negative, and on this side, the cosmological constant is positive. And there's another curve you can draw through here like that, and that is the curve k is zero. And on this side... Uh, k is plus 1, and on this side, k is minus 1. Okay? Now, this solution here is Einstein de Sitter, a key point here. This solution here is Milne, and this solution here is de Sitter. These three simple models that I told you were important. And what you get is a beautiful set of evolution curves here. Now, 
the Einstein de Sitter universe is a fixed point. If you're Einstein de Sitter exactly, you stay there forever. You can't get up. Oh, sorry, I should have said this is for P is naught, but for arbitrary values of the cosmological constant. So this is for dust. Okay, one solution is this model, which goes up here, and that is an Einstein static universe, uh, sorry, uh, Einstein de Sitter perturbation, which reaches a maximum and then recollapses. So that's a universe which goes to a maximum and recollapses. This is a model which just expands forever. So these are the vanishing cosmological constant solutions on this line. The Einstein de Sitter, the one which just reaches infinity, the ones which recollapse on this side, and the ones which expand forever on this side. Okay. This is a solution. And... Okay, what the solution curves look like is they look like this. That's a solution, that's a solution, these are solutions. Now there's a critical curve here that comes down, and these are the ones which collapse, um, which are non-singular in the past, and these ones here are non-singular in the past. And this is the one which comes down as an asymptotic to the... Uh, Um, th these are the ones which collapse like that, and this is the one which was um, asymptotic to the Einstein static and then expands forever. So this is non-singular because it was Einstein static in the past and then expands forever. All the ones here in this shaded green area are the ones which recollapse. So these have got infinite age. You get solutions which come like that and like that, and then yeah. ones which go like that and like that. And that's a phase plane for dust universe models with a non-vanishing cosmological constant. Now, where are we? Which one are we? And the current values, which I will come to later, but the current value which people believe in is omega about 0.7 and omega... Um, matter about 0.3 with the total omega m close to 1, but maybe a little bit positive. And what that would suggest is being, uh, where is it? I'll have to work out where that is. I haven't plotted that on this diagram. Um, sigma naught. Um, it's one of the ones which is asymptotic to over here, so it'll be a little bit positive. It'll be something like about there on a model which is going to expand forever. One of the interesting things in this model is... So, so what, what you can see now is that the de Sitter universe is the attractor in the future for all models with positive lambda, which expand forever. The de Sitter is the attractor for all such models. The Milne universe is the attractor for models with the special case lambda is naught, but it's unstable. If lambda is slightly positive or negative, it goes off in those directions there. Um, the Einstein de Sitter model is the source for all of the models. In this, notice that this is the pressure-free case. This won't be accurate at very, very early times, and there is an extension of this diagram. Ehlers and Rindler have got a very nice extension of this to matter plus radiation, and that is in monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society um, about 1987. I'm not sure exactly of the date, but they give an extension of this, an accurate one, which includes matter and radiation, which means they have to have a third direction. So it's much more complicated. They have a matter direction uh, and then a radiation direction, and their model, they, they have a version of this in which they take into account non-interacting matter and radiation. And that's a very nice model, which they, uh, a face plane model which they have of the exact non-interacting matter and radiation in the early universe. I think we've had a pretty long session, so I think we'll stop at this point. I'm going to show you another face plane tomorrow and then go on to start talking about 
observations.